time, as it always does, marched on. To understand the urgent need for Challenger 3, we've got to first look at its predecessor. The Challenger 2 was, and honestly still is, a formidable machine. It earned its legendary status in Iraq, where it proved to be one of the most survivable tanks in the world, boasting an incredible operational record without a single combat loss due to enemy fire. For its time, it was an icon of British engineering, a symbol of strength and resilience that was respected by allies and, yet yeah, feared by adversaries across the globe. Time, as it always does, marched on. While the Challenger 2's armor stayed world-class, its offensive capabilities began to lag dangerously behind. Its most significant drawback was its main weapon, the L30A 1120mm rifled gun. While accurate and powerful, it was unique among NATO allies who had almost universally standardized on smoothbore cannons. This created a huge logistical problem. Britain was the only nation using its specific type of ammunition, making it impossible to share munitions with allies like the Americans or Germans in the heat of battle. This ammunition issue was more than a logistical headache. It was a strategic vulnerability. Equipped with new armor and advanced weapon systems, the Challenger II, with its analog era electronics and outdated gun, was at risk of being outmatched and outgunned. Its fire control systems, once state-of-the-art, were becoming obsolete in a world of digital sites, thermal images, and networked battlefields, where identifying and engaging a target in seconds is the difference between life and death. To face the threats of the 2020s and beyond, the British Army knew it couldn't just apply another sticking plaster. It needed a revolution, not an evolution. The era of the Challenger 2 was over. The successor was not just desirable, it was absolutely essential for survival.